Okay, so today we're working on a three and a half ton Kubota excavator. Uh, the owner has decided to install a tilt hitch, which is a quick hitch and a tilt hitch. So when they, you know, they can quickly connect and disconnect buckets and implements, but the added feature of the tilt hitch, which, you, which is not shown here, is you can also tilt buckets and implements to the left and to the right so uh, because of that they need an additional function to be able to tilt the hitch as well as connect and disconnect the hitch. So we've decided that we will install a six port diverter valve which we have down in here. So it takes the function or in this case the auxiliary function and it divides it up into two functions so this is the auxiliary function here so we have a, a coupling and an isolator valve on this side of the dipper arm and we've got a coupling and an isolator valve on this side and these are the hoses that you would connect if you were running an auger or an earth drill whether you were running a tilt bucket or whether you were running a, a rock breaker or a hammer so they they connect into here and these will supply oil to the implements that you want to use the added complication is that how do we actually operate the tilt function so that you can actually tilt the auger or you can tilt the hammer or you can actually tilt the bucket to the left and tilt it to the right. So this is what a six port diverter valve does. So we've taken the original supply from the main valve and fed them into what they call port A1 and port A2. So these are the original lines coming in with the blue cable ties. With this coil unenergized, in other words, you're not sending any energy or power to this coil, oil will go straight through the valve and come out of B1 and B2, which is shown here in this lime green, lime yellow colour cable ties. These two hoses will then go to the tilt hitch. So when you want to operate the tilt function now, automatically when you hit this little toggle switch on the right joystick, it'll operate the tilt hitch function. So left and right, tilting the bucket to the left or the right will be implement to the left or the right, whether it's a rock break or whether it's a, uh, an organ. When you actually want to use an implement, you energize the coil, which is just a switch here. And when this is energized, there's two things that happen. The coil is energized, which then the coil is energized, which then blocks B1 and B2, so the tilt function is locked into whatever position you last used it at, and it opens and allows flow to C1 and C2. These are the pink little cable ties here. So now you've got flow going to your implements or your auxiliary function as before. So the auxiliary function is complicated because you can either have an organ or you can have a hammer function. So when you're using an auger or an earth drill, you want to be able to go in both directions. However, when you want to use a rock breaker or a hammer, you can only supply oil. You can only supply oil in the one direction. 
So, this is the original circuit before we installed the six port diverter valve and this is the modified circuit after we installed the six port diverter valve. So I'll describe and explain prior how it was and then after we installed the six port diverter valve. So, the important thing to remember with this auxiliary function here from this directional control valve is that included in the hydraulic system or circuit is this T-port diverter valve. It's only the one valve but we've shown it twice in two different positions. So in this position here all three ports are open and this is actually called one way and I'll explain why it's called one way. Whereas in this position, it's, this valve is actually rotated 90 degrees, so you can transpose that valve over the top, but this is how it will look. And when it's in this position, it's actually called two-way, which means the following, and I'll explain. So, if, for example, you energize the, the button on the joystick in one direction, this moves the spool to that direction, and all of a sudden the pressure is coming through there so it's going into A and if for example the implement that we've got attached to the hoses on the dipper arm and the couplings on the dipper arm is an auger it's going to go into the auger the auger is going to spin in one direction the spent oil is going to come out all right A means you should have it in two ways so it should be in that position there so the oil the oil coming out of the auger will go straight through that valve can't go that way it'll go down into the B port which is this one here which means tank and that will go into tank all right if you want to use a hammer or a rock breaker you have to rotate the valve into what's called the one-way position. In one way means it, the oil can only go one way and that's back to tank. All right, so let's just explain what that means. Uh, if it's in this position and you're using the hammer, hammers can only take oil in one direction. They don't like oil in the opposite direction or they won't accept oil in the opposite direction. Also, the spent oil coming out of the hammer needs to go back to tank as unresistant, you know, with little resistance as possible. So we try and bypass going through the valve and then back to tank, and we bypass the valve, and we go straight to tank with this T-port diverter. So in this position, it's called one way. So what happens is you energize in this direction. If you energize in this direction, that means that P-port comes through here, goes into A, goes into the hammer. Hammer does its job by oscillating the internal piston comes out of there and then it's not going to go that way it's going to find it much easier to go that way and quickly back to tank so it's a shortcut back to tank all right if accidentally you hit the toggle in the opposite direction you accidentally supply oil when that lever when that directional control valve moves into that position so all of a sudden P is now reversed so all of a sudden, pressure is coming out of the B port. But in the one-way position, you're not going to damage your hammer because the pressure is just going to go back to tank. So you can't damage your hammer. If you forget to leave that valve in that one-way position and then you connect the auger, what you'll find is that the auger will only rotate in the one direction. And when you try and reverse the rotation, you'll notice it doesn't rotate because the oil's going back to tank. Alright, so that's the original design. So whether you use an auger or whether you use a hammer or a rock breaker. Now, moving across to here, we've now introduced a six port diverter valve. So it's got a little bit more complicated, but we've added another function. And that's the purpose of the six port diverter valve. You can add functions. Incidentally, you can add layers and layers and layers of these six port diverter valves so with the one directional control valve you can operate one function or 
another function or another function or another function. You can continue to add functions if you don't have any more directional control valves. So, in this case, we've added this six port diverter valve to do two functions the tilt hitch or to do an auxiliary function, which is either an auger or a rock breaker. Okay? Uh, or even a tilt bucket, if you like, which is different to a tilt hitch. Now, so normally what we've done is you've got a coil here, and when you leave the coil unenergized and you hit the toggle switch and that moves into that position, pressure will go in, will come out of A, go into A1, come out of B1 and go into the hitch and actually rotate the hitch in one direction. Yeah? When you then energize and the return oil from the hitch will go through there into B and out to tank from that line there. If you then reverse the toggle and all of a sudden you're reversing your flows, P then comes out of B. So then it goes into B which is A2, comes out of B2 and the hitch operates in the opposite direction. Okay, are you with me? Hopefully yes. Now, so under normal circumstances you have movement for your tilt hitch. All right, now tilt hitches are great for buckets uh, and when you're actually wanting to excavate the side of a, a hill, for example. Yeah, that's the beauty of you can actually rotate. Most buckets are fixed on excavators, but with a tilt hitch, you can actually move the bucket in any angle you want. So you can actually create a slope on a hill if you like. So that's with the coil unenergized. As soon as you energize the coil two thing happens. The first thing that happens is the tilt hitch ports B2 and B1 are blocked. So the hitch will stay locked in whatever position it was in. Alright? It will not move. But you're then diverting oil out of C1 and C2. So all of a sudden you have the same original thing repeated. Okay? So all of a sudden you've energized the coil. So C1, depending on whether you have this in one way, all three ports are open, or two way, only two ports are open. You can either use the auger when it's in two way, or you can use a hammer or rock break when it's in the one way. Alright, so that you've replicated the original function all right using the auxiliaries the only other thing that you need to install on six port diverter valves is a case drain if your operating pressure goes over 200 bar which is about 3000 psi anything over 3000 psi you must install an additional case drain on the back of the spool so that it continues to shift normally uh, that's it really Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, we've already we'll go to the machine now and have a look and explain the different hoses. So as with all our products, if you need more information or you want to know where to source one, look in the description below the video. Originally before the modification, this hose that now disappears to the six port diverter valve used used to connect to this diverter valve here which is actually a T port diverter valve and depending on whether you're using a hammer or whether you're using an auger it depends on which way this valve is actually rotated So in this position is what's called two-way. So oil can come out of the, the two ports here and here, where the two blue cable ties are. And you can actually reverse the flow. So like when you're using an auger and you want to screw into the earth or you want to unscrew and screw back out of the earth. All right. So this is actually a T-port diverter valve. When you actually rotate it to this position, 
all ports are open. So that port is open, which goes to tank. That port is open, which also goes to tank. And this port is also open, which goes to tank. So this is actually used when you're actually using a hammer or a rock breaker, where you only want the hammer to actually operate it with flow in one direction only. And if you accidentally press the flow in the reverse direction, the flow doesn't actually reverse, go in the reverse direction into the hammer, which can aggravate the hammer. It actually returns to tank rather than going back to the hammer. So the other advantage of this T-port is that any oil returning from the hammer after it's done its work has a much easier and less torturous path with a lot less back pressure to go back to tank. It doesn't actually have to go back to tank via the valve here. It just returns straight to tank. So that's the function of this diverter valve here. It's actually a T-port diverter valve. All right, in one direction, all three ports are open, and in one, and then the other location, only two ports are open. And that one is blocked. Hopefully that made some sense and uh, you learned something today. This was a little bit of a, a challenge for us to work out but we got there in the end. Uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, as usual, if you like what you saw, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. If you think of subscribing, please consider subscribing. And uh, Want to see something else? Something you didn't, we didn't do quite right? Something that you didn't like? Yeah. Comment, ask questions. Bye for now.